the important thing is that we don't uh, we don't we don't need to worry about an instantaneous allocation rate spike. Okay. But what's of a concern to us, right? Because why do you care about the allocation rate? You care because you want to make sure you finish collection before the mutator allocates more memory than you had in reserve when you started. Right. Okay. Right. So, um, so all you care about is what's the average allocation rate over that span of time. Okay. Once, you know, once you've specified that, okay, then, you know, then I can basically, with this information, right, I can I can sort of characterize what's going to happen. So, so you know, so. We characterize the collector. Um, when you start up the system, you specify your max life, your allocation rate. Uh, you tell us what your real time interval is, which we call delta t. And then you can either say, well, I have s amount of real memory. And we'll come back and we'll say, well, given all these characteristics, we can guarantee you utilization u for every interval delta t. Or, you know, it's more likely, as you come and say, well, I need, you know, so and so many, you know, I need 50% out of every five milliseconds. Uh, and we'll come back and say, okay, to achieve that, we need so and so much memory. So, so my understanding, based on this, this description, um, you, you can't guarantee for, a, for an instantaneous spike that you're gonna have enough memory. Basically, you're amortizing over the entire, you know, you know, execution of the program, finding some kind of average. But in, in a given instant, you might have a rate that's higher than what you predict there, in which case you haven't reserved enough. Is that is that accurate? Uh, it, no, it's not. Um, the we don't care if there's an instantaneous spike. Okay. Right. Uh, as long as you've accurately told me, to say a GC takes two seconds. So, and you've given me your allocation rate, and you told me what your allocation rate uh, over an interval of one second is going to be, right? Okay. So, as long as you don't lie about your average allocation rate, I could care less what your instantaneous rate is. Okay. Uh, we can talk about it. I have to see how you work that. Okay. Uh, maybe you should postpone this too, but I, I might concern is I think the ability you lose in this case is that if you have a short-term mutated behavior which allocates lots of stuff, with the other way of accounting for it, you could just say, okay, allocations are expensive. They effectively cost me, uh, they cost me lots per byte because I have to pay for the GC time as well. Whereas in this case, basically the, the, the allocation, the maximum allocation rate will go through the roof. And I'm not sure you have a good way of accounting for that. You know, I think I think this is I think this is much easier for people to deal with, right? I mean, the problem is that so I mean, you're saying, well, we could just tell people that allocation of big things is slow, or allocation of lots of things is slow. Okay, but the the problem is, you know, once again, it's this it's this k factor slowdown, right? So what you're really telling people is, uh, you know, this. This new here, you know, it might take one millisecond, and it might take ten milliseconds. Right? You know, if, I, if I knew up, uh, you know, uh, one megabyte array. Okay. Um, but first of all, that means that I, as a programmer, have to start reasoning about very wide variations in response time of the of the individual operations. Right, which makes it very hard for me to think about how am I going to meet some overall deadline. But it depends on the object size, right? And you deal with that in other cases too. The amount of time it takes to copy an object depends on the size. Sure, but it's yeah. it's another one of these examples of the constants are important, right? If we were dealing with a constant of one point five, that might be reasonable. But in fact, the constant when the constant becomes twenty. Uh, it's not. But we, you know, we can talk about this more later. Um, okay. So, so that was sort of how we deal with the time issue. But if you if you don't 
you know, if you don't make sure you meet that memory target, then you effectively haven't met your real time bound either. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how we do this. So uh, there's two basic organizations that people have traditionally used for uh, uh, incremental uh, collection. One is uh, semi-space copying. Right? You just have two halves of memory, and you know, you, uh, you know, when you start the GC, you start migrating objects into the into the red space, and you start allocating objects in the red space, and uh, you know, then when you fill that one up, you get back. Um, and yeah, so there's there's some costs there in terms of both the work of doing the copying and maintaining the consistency between the copies. That can be quite tricky. Um, and you're paying an upfront sort of uh, fragmentation of a factor of two. Um, but and very importantly, it's bounded. From, you're not going to be worse than a factor of two fragmentation. The other thing people have done is said, well, you know, we'll just do a mark sweep. We'll have some non-moving, uh, and you know, we just won't move objects. And we'll have a bunch of heuristics for fragmentation. <coughs> and we'll coalesce adjacent objects, maybe. Um, but you know, the fragmentation there is actually unbounded. Um, so um, you know, David, yeah, I disagree with that. It's bounded by it's logarithmically bounded. Uh, it's the log of the, the nature of the object size. It's uh, it's it's not bounded enough to be practical. That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> does, does it come across that I'm not really a theoretician? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, so what we have is a very simple segregated free list architecture. Okay, we, you know, we have a list of objects of size 12, we have a list of objects of size 16, etc. Each one of these is made up of a page that's you know, carved up for all of the objects on the page of the same size. Um, and you know, so now we have to somehow uh, bound very precisely what, uh, you know, what kinds of memory loss we're going to suffer from. It was kind of a big surprise to me when you know, I sat down and said, okay, you know, let's you know, let's just account for all of the fragmentation. Said, oh, okay, well, there's internal and there's external, and let's add it up. And uh, we discovered there are actually five kinds of fragmentation we have to deal with, which was uh, very annoying. Anyway, so there's two kinds of in right, So here you've got an object which isn't completely using up its object slot. That's what's traditionally thought of as internal fragmentation. Uh, but here you've got an object size which doesn't evenly divide the page size. Um, so you have a little bit of wasted space at the end of the page. So that's what we call page internal fragmentation. Um, you can deal with those things basically by um, uh, keeping a certain ratio between these uh, object sizes. Um, then there's sort of traditional external fragmentation. You know, I have some one megabyte array, and there's five megabytes free, but there's no one megabyte contiguous chunk that I can use. Um, and the way we deal with that is we break up objects, large objects, which turn out to be arrays, into chunks called arraylets. Um, and that lets us basically have no fragmentation of that kind. Um, and it also um, incrementalizes large object operations, which we needed to do anyway. Um, and then there's what we call page external, which is, you know, let's say, I I need David, to just in case that's not clear, that means that when you address an array, you have to do two loads rather than one load. Yeah. Uh, except when it's in a loop. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, we have a whole family of optimizations for making that look like regular low rates almost all the time. Um, so let's say we want to allocate more 16-byte objects, and we run off the end of this, right? Well, there's a free pages worth of stuff down here, but we can't use it. Uh, so that's what we're calling page external fragmentation. And that we deal with by uh, 
defragmenting within these size classes. And then finally, there's this thing we call size external, which is, well, if you only have one 16-byte object, you know, it's still sort of pinning a page. Uh, and right now, we just eat that. We figure, well, you know, there's enough pages and so on. There's things we we'll try to do to address that, yeah? I mean, despite these five kinds of fragmentation, if you measure the typical application performance, and this is not real time, but with the segregated free list architecture, the only one that I've ever seen that perform better was Cartesian trees, which are going slow. Way slow. Right. Um, <laughs> way, way, way slow. Way slow, yes. Right, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm not knocking segregated free list architecture. I mean, it's what we use. Yeah. I'm just saying that. Well, let me let me go on. I, th I think it'll be yeah. So 